This is I've Got Scars, baby. I grew up in the boogie joint, you know. I used to run numbers, you know, by the age of five, six, I would run them. And I would um, really explore the names of the horses. <laughs> and that was one of the things that would just have me, um, you know, just fantasizing, like how they can make up all of these interesting names. But in that energy, um, even with poetry, um, I say poetry found me in the Watts environment because Watts has a long history of music, art, culture, mm -hmm. um, that type of energy. So my mother would listen, or my family for that matter, would listen to all of these jamming songs. And I felt that um, poetry for me has always been a way of life and a foundation of life. So all of these, you know, Tina Marie, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, um, the dramatics, the stylistics, you go on and on and on, Motown, right? So I was always um, being birthed into a poem. However, poetry found me at a time that um, I needed to be found. <laughs> now, let's, now let's go ahead and talk about the needing to be found elements. Like, what does that mean? What was going on in your life because again, I just want to paint the picture for people so people don't think that, you know, it was just all about the music and the, and the, the beauty, you know, it, it was some other things, you know. So what Absolutely. was going on when poetry found you? So um, what was going on? You know, I, I grew up in, again, in, in Watson at a time in the 80s, whereas it was the crack epidemic, you know, gangs was at an all time high. So it was a lot of murders going on in Watts, a lot of murders happening because money came to the neighborhood and um, people got a chance to exchange <laughs> goods for services and sometimes get into argument where people would lose their life. So um, by the time I was, I graduated high school, more than 20 of my high school friends got violently murdered, right? So I would go to their funerals and um, I didn't have no other thing to, or I didn't have the capacity to articulate how I was feeling. Uh, so I would start writing. I always wrote, right? But I did not necessarily know back then I was writing poetry, but I would wrote just to, I would write just to articulate what I was feeling. Uh, Marcus Garvey, um, our great um, uh, black national, or the father of black nationalism, once said, "A reading man or woman is a ready man or woman, but a writing man or woman is exact." So, at a young age, I was able to be exact and write what I felt about my friends getting killed. Um, the pastors at the time were, and people in the church and people in the neighborhood will always say, "Wow, the the Most High God has His hand over that. Like, keep doing that." And then family started to request me to come to funerals to um, be in that energy, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I just embraced it. And um, it came at a time where, um, you know, I didn't expect to live past 25, right? And I was okay with that. You know, that's what was going on in Watts. So um, when I became 26, it was like, whoa, I got to do something else now. I'm still alive. So wow. I began, and this is, and this was really common. Like me and my homeboys, we were okay with how whatever was supposed to happen. Like we were products of this environment, right? Mm -hmm. And for the most part, it was um, a beautiful, um, terrible, <laughs> vibrant, artistic, um, gang, yeah, energized environment. So yeah. that's when poetry found me. Poetry found me when I um, began to go to funerals and recite poems. Um, and at the time, I didn't know it was spoken word. I just knew that I felt better after I did it. So that's how I was able to get into um, poetry through going to funerals when I was um, 16 years old. Wow. Wow. 